The film is about actress Lourdes Colon, who was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, and it happened just as she was seeing her TV and movie career really take off. Lourdes Colon is in town from L.A., and she joins us now along with Chris Lavoie. He's the director of the documentary and Lourdes' husband. We also have Nicholas Gonzalez. He's in the film and has appeared in such shows as Law & Order, Melrose Place, and Grey's Anatomy. Hey nice guys. to have you all here. Nice You're a good-looking bunch. Thank you. You should yeah, be on are. film, right? Especially early in the morning, coming from the West Coast, Camp Easy. So, how are you doing now? What's your 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 cancer situation as it as it is today? Um, I'm healthier now than I was before I ever got sick. Really? Yeah. So I'm very healthy, cancer-free, I'm doing good. Why do you think you're healthier now than before your diagnosis? Have you done things intentionally to, to, to look and feel good? Yes, um, through my journey and my research, I learned why I ended up getting cancer in the first place, so I started avoiding those habits I used to have. So now my complete nutrition is different. I, I juice every morning, you know, every kind of greens and some fruits mixed Spinach. together. And you name Kale. it, I put it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ginger. It's just, yeah, it's the whole thing. Let's talk a little bit about the film, because what we're looking at is actually a tumor that moved in your body. That had to be a, like a really freaky, scary thing. And I mean, you're very honest and open throughout the, the, the film about your journey and the, and the pain that you go through and, and the decisions you have to make. Yeah, it was... Um it was interesting because <laughs> I had my, in my mind, I was like, I just have to do what I need to get done. And so I was very focused on how can I take my situation and inspire the world and make a difference so that no one else has to go through this. So I kind of took myself as the guinea pig and figured it out. So it kept me focused on what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. So it made it kind of easy. Yeah. Well, as you started your, your, your cancer journey, because a lot of people, as soon as they get diagnosed, they, they surround themselves with a team of professionals and yes. really decide what route is right for them. Yes. Talk about what you started doing and kind of the process of where you came in your journey and, and where yeah. you've ended. Um, well, I, when I went to, to the doctor and they gave me the diagnosis, they went through this whole step of, you know, this is what we have to do. And they talked about what they had to put in and the test and then the, the whole treatments. And as they were telling me that, I started thinking, okay, I need to start doing research. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to do this all naturally. I got to do a lot of reading, a lot of just finding out and talking with others. And then I started getting friends on board with me as a team. And I said, okay, this is what I want to do. And it was funny because it was like divided. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some had, supported you and some didn't. And probably. the other half said I was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, no, just do what the doctor says. Don't, don't do anything else. This is your life. And I'm like, exactly. So this is what I want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and then I just started doing research. I, I read so many, so many books about things that are anti-cancer and how to fight things naturally. What kinds of things? Because people out yeah. there may want to, what are, I mean, we hear things about superfoods, you know, like yes. flaxseed and kale and, you know, wheatgrass shots. Yes. and things like that. Yes, I did a lot, a lot of wheatgrass. <laughs> a lot of it. It Yummy. was so, oh my gosh. <laughs> I like wheatgrass. Do you? Yeah. I know people that do, and I'm like, gosh, if I just had that, if I could just be that way, yeah. right. I would chug that like nothing. <laughs> but I take it down like, like a brick. And so, yeah. yeah. But it's so healthy. So yeah, I did like wheatgrass. Um, I did a lot of juicing, a lot of raw. I stood away from all the sugar because sugar, mm -hmm. cancer loves sugar. Yeah. Um, I did um, a lot of colonics and a lot of, because you want to pull out all the junk as you're cleaning. When you're detoxing, it's toxic if you keep the stuff in. Mm -hmm. So colonics, coffee enemas, to de you know, probiotics to put in the good bacteria. But there was just this whole system of things that I needed to do and then to things that I needed to stay away from. So, mm -hmm. Why make this film? It must have been hard because there's a personal connection. Mm -hmm. It was, it, well, it's easily the most personal project I've ever been on, you know. So, um, Lourdes for the longest time as an, as an actress, she kept saying, you know, I want to I change the world for the better. I want to make a difference. And we always had a conversation, well, yeah, when you're at, as an actress, you can do that. You know, you get some notoriety, you can get out there and, you know, inspire others to do the same thing, follow their dreams. And then when this happened, uh, the very first thing she said was, I'm going to document everything. I'm, I'm going to make a documentary out of this. I want your help with this. Um, this is how I'm going to make a difference. And at first, I wasn't 100% on board. I'm all like, yeah, do both. You know, do chemotherapy and radiation and, you know, because that's what they were pushing on her. And, and do your natural stuff as well. And she said, no. <laughs> and if, uh, it, you know, if you get to know Lourdes, you know that when she's made up her mind about something, that's what she's going to do. And, and that's always been her personality. It's one of the things I love about her. And so I had, a, I had a, a choice to make. I could either support her 
or it could be against her. And it, when, it, when it gets down to that, when it's a real black and white question like that, you just, uh, it, was, it was easy. Yes, of course I support you. I mean, it had to have gotten really scary, especially when she was in, I believe it was an induced coma. Yes, right. Um, and she's laying there, she's, she's unconscious, fighting for her life. And you're like, I'm still making this movie. Yeah, that was that was actually the probably the the hardest point for me. So so what was what was almost beneficial about making the movie is uh, when I was operating the camera, I had a sort of a, a sense of separation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it sounds odd, but it got me a more objective perspective mm -hmm. as to what was going on. Uh, there were times where it was really difficult for me to pick up a camera, where I just was like, I don't care. I just want her to be better. I want her to be well. Uh, and then Lourdes made me promise her that I would continue filming no matter what. And so there were times where it was literally just that promise that kept me going as far as recording and, and videotaping and documenting. Mm -hmm. What's your connection to the film? Um, well, I've, I work uh, a lot with the cancer ward at, at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, but I mean, that's just my own interest as uh, I guess some people call it humanitarian. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I was reached out to by uh, Latin Heat, who's also one of the sponsors of the screening, um, just trying to bring a little more attention to people they, they think that are in line with, uh, with what, you know, Lourdes' philosophy and, and uh, what she went through. And honestly, it just took me watching the documentary to be just so moved and I mean I think everybody knows a story like this or you think you do or you heard about it someone's beat cancer it's touched us you know we we've all been touched by it but to really put yourself at that point of what would you do you know wh mm -hmm. when it's all comes down to it I think most people you go towards well I'm gonna go towards modern medicine and everything that we know and that to know that there's these other options out there that are really viable it's not harebrained schemes it's not I mean there we show evidence there in the in the movie and you see you know the effect and and we're just there's so many cancer causing things in, in our daily life that we don't realize it until we're faced with with something like Lourdes what's your takeaway from from watching the documentary um you know we were joking around about like what it's about and i said you know i didn't i didn't see the love in it but i, I was kidding <laughs> that, you know, that was like probably the biggest thing but honestly like they always talk about people fighting cancer and and courage and and I, I really think I stick to, we don't really think about it until you're in that situation. And it forced me to look at it and go, I don't, I don't know if, if I could do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if, if I would have the strength. I don't know if I would have the, the, um, the wherewithal and the courage to make that type of decision like she did. And that's what really hit me. I was like, gosh, if anything, this, this woman's got guts. Yeah, you definitely. Know. And I think, you know, you, you do work with all these natural treatments. You learn so much about nutrition yes. and taking care of your own body. In the end, you do use some advanced yes. medical yes. Um, help. Yes. But your point is take charge of your own cancer yes. journey. Do the research. Do the homework yes. like you did. Make yeah. your own decisions and then ask everybody around you mm -hmm. to support that. Oh, absolutely. I think it's so crucial to do that because, you know, if we just go one way and then everything just falls apart, we then feel even more hopeless. But yeah. this allows us to be powerful in our choosing. And, you know, and when things come up, because you've taken care of yourself so physically well, that you, at the end, you do beat it. Because everybody thinks, well, you know, I, they gave me three weeks. Oh, well, they, you know, this one, it's, it's rare. And there's all these millions of excuses, but it's like, it's fixable. If you can breathe and you're alive, you can fix it. I really believe that our bodies are perfectly made. And it's just a matter of, you know, even the medical team, they're still learning. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still a learning process. And I, for me, it's like, let's put it all together. Let's, if, if you're doing it naturally or you're doing it chemotherapy way, you know, high, uh, conventionally, do something that you yourself can build yourself up. Because even when I did have to eventually do chemo to seal the lung, because it, it was not good, <laughs> and mm -hmm. that was going to scar my lungs to keep it sealed, I knew there was things that I could do so that it wasn't so harmful to my yeah. body, mm -hmm. you know, which doctors don't know that because they're not trained in that way. And so I, actually, I, it was neat because I had this conversation with the conventional doctor, and we really bonded um, Dr. Bahadini, who's in it. And she got where I was coming from. So she then would say, oh, you know, I found out that. And, she, and then we would sh exchange information on things. Mm -hmm. and it's, Treating it's the that. whole patient then. Yes, instead yeah. of being just the same. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not all in one square. You gotta get outside that and really start finding out what works with you. I think it's you. great. Thank you. Yeah. The, the, the screening tonight, so you can go and follow more about this journey, it's at the Oriental Theater. It's tonight. The red carpet starts at 6 o'clock. The private screening of the film is at 6.30. There's going to be followed by a Q&A with Lourdes Cologne as well as Chris um, and Nicholas as well. You can RSVP on their page. It's Latin Heat. 
Com to learn more about her cancer journey, about the natural ways, detoxification, and how they can fit in with chemotherapy into your journey. We also Thanks have so Isai much. Morales, who's joined us uh, from great. Los Angeles, who will be there at yeah, the yeah. screening in the Q&A tonight, He's, who's also in the film. Awesome. It's wonderful. Nice yeah. to meet yeah. all of you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And did we mention it was, it's free? It's free. <laughs> it's so <laughs> great. It's free for you to attend. And we yes. said private screening, but anybody is welcome yes. to RSVP yeah. and join you tonight yes. for that. Yes. So it's fantastic. Thanks and so at much, the Oriental, guys. which is a great venue. So thank you thank to you, you all. Appreciate it. Thank you, so thank you for your support. Yes. All right. Well,